for inviting me. Uh, uh, I'm the only Latino here that actually looks Jewish in the Jewish Center, so I feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a spaceship. This is cool. Anyway, um, you know, just a few things I wanted to say. Um, one is um, that I've been looking at the issue of Latino politics for yeah, 40 years. We're doing studies. I, I'm uh, kind of like a political scientist, and I do research on this stuff. And uh, one of the things I concluded is that, uh, you know, politics for a community like ours is too important to lead to the politician. I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's something that we need to get more people involved that are not the typical political people, people from the communities. And, and that's a big challenge uh, because right, one of the biggest problems we have now, and it hits the Latino community more than anything else, is when you ask our folks, you're going to go and vote? They go, pa' qué? Un chorro de pillo. Yeah. These uh, politicians we have, they're all crooks. They're being investigated. They're in jail. Lo que sea. No importa si es Puerto Rican, Dominican. You know, it's like a mess. And so that's one of the challenges I think that we have. How do you overcome that cynicism that we have in the community? Uh, and you can't say that people are making anything up. Because, I mean, just pick up the paper. Or pick up the uh, Queens from here, queenslatino.com. It's uh, you know, todo, todo uh, and, But, you know, as we look at this, it's demoralizing. And it's something where people, for example, they're not talking about issues that affect our community anymore. Achievement. It's, you know, stupid stuff that's going on. And so the issues, the high poverty, the housing conditions, the health, none of that stuff gets talked about. And so politics becomes a stupid thing that most people in our community say it's not even worth getting involved. Now, one of the things that's important, I think, when you talk specifically about Queens, is that Queens historically in New York, politically, has been what I call a backwater of Latino politics. It's always been behind. One is because a lot of the Latino communities here are younger than in the other boroughs, uh, except for Staten Island. And so what you have was a community that got involved in the political process later. And also, uh, Queens had the issue, right, that it, it was, it's the borough of, of immigrants. And so you had the problem that first you have people that are younger, so they weren't even eligible to vote, a big percentage. People who aren't citizens, so they can't vote because they're not citizens. All of those things made it difficult, I think, for this community to overcome and to begin to get political representation. And then you had weird things going on, right? So after all these years of trying to get better representation in the political process, you know, the first uh, the Latino to get elected uh, which I didn't make, didn't make any sense to me was, was a Puerto Rican. You know, what? Hiram got elected in Queens. You know, I figured it'd be like a, you know, Colombian or Ecuadorian. I was either, but I told the other sentido. So it's a kind of a weird kind of process that, that, that's going on with this community. Uh, it's taken a long time for this community to have the kind of representation you have today. Uh, but it's been interesting because uh, we see this community catching up to the other boroughs in terms of Latino representation. And that's a good thing. You know, you have your first, uh, you know, uh, non-Puerto Rican, non-Dominican getting elected. Hopefully, uh, this will happen in November. Uh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, and I think that's, that's important to see, yeah, within all this craziness of this politics and all this negativism, there has been some progress. There is some representation. The thing is, what do you do with the representation you have, and how do you build on that? I think that's important to, for folks, as you talk about the development of the future of Queens politics, to take, uh, really study the other boroughs. Look at what happened in the Puerto Rican case and the Dominican case, uh, and see what went right and what went wrong. The problem is that across the city, uh, especially in the Latino community, but generally, you know, the fact is that the, the factor of corruption is killing the politics of the city, of this country, and it's hitting our community even worse. This is across the board. You know, one time, the center of Puerto Rican uh, politics in New York was the Bronx. Remember, there was uh, the Puerto Ricans uh, control the Bronx Democratic machine, uh, or party, whatever the hell they call it. And now that's, that, eso está destruido. Those people are like eating each other, you know, up in the Bronx. So where we had a center, that's, uh, nothing's going, you know, what you have is, 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 is is this cannibalism or you know congrejo, <coughs> whatever they call it, thing with the thing. Anyway, um, so so that's that's a, that's something that you need to study, because one of the things that you want to do is not do that, right? You don't want to get to that point, but yet you're it, you're there already, you're there already. So how do you what 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 things do you learn from the Puerto Rican the Dominican experience that you can apply here about not repeating? And the value you have is you have you don't have the the decades of history 
of that going on. So you, you're relatively new. So maybe you have a chance to change the politics of Latino politics in Queens you know, in a positive direction. So one of the things you want to do is, one, this idea that you, know, you elect people, and then they go and do whatever the hell they want because they think that they have a job and all the being a politician is that you just got a job and you get a salary and you do what all these. That's something that people have to challenge. You have to challenge and say, look, you have to be accountable to the community. You know, what, you're not meeting with our city, uh, Latino city council person? You're not meeting with our city, you know, our state senator? You're not meeting with a state assemblyman to develop a plan, an uh, agenda for the Latino community? Well, that's no good. That's the, you may guys may be fighting, but you have to come together on behalf of the community. So you have to understand that, that we need to put pressure on these guys. One of the biggest obstacles we have as a community across the board is the Democratic Party, the party that we're the most loyal to. What does it do? It doesn't support our community. It doesn't develop leadership. The biggest complaint we always have is that Latinos, you don't see Latinos running for citywide or statewide office. Is it because we're stupid? Is it because we don't have the money? No, because the political party structures it in a way that makes it hard for our people to develop. So what do we have to do? We have to find ways to hold the Democratic Party accountable. The Republican Party also, but that's another story, but the Democratic Party, how do we hold them accountable? And as someone mentioned to me, it's, it, you know, it's not just the district leaders that they have to listen to, they have to listen to people in the community. And our community has been so loyal to that party that they better start changing the way they, they, they deal with us. That's a big issue. I think we, just like we hold, try to hold the government accountable, corporations accountable, we have to hold that party accountable. Uh, for example, I always wonder, yeah, these political parties, they're like private organizations. You know, they're not part of government, right? They're private organizations. I'm saying, why the hell do we pay for their, their primary elections? You know, we pay good money from our taxes. For these, if they're private companies, Pay for your own goddamn uh, primaries, you know? <laughs> what the hell are we subsidizing? So we have to hold them accountable. So when they tell you, you approach them and say it's none of your business, tell them, yeah, it is our business. You're, a private, you're being subsidized by, by the people. So I think that's, that's one issue that I think that's also very important. The other thing you have to be very important to focus on is that we're coming up to re the, the process of redistricting, okay? And that's an issue that we have to pay attention to and how those, those, those lines are drawn. Uh, that has important implications for the way the community is organized and represented. So the folks in Queens, you have to be involved in that process. Don't leave it up to the lawyers. Don't leave it up to the politicians. You have to have everybody involved in that process, learning about you know, whether your neighborhoods are being well represented or not, uh, looking at that process, uh, because you know, it's a very devious one where they cut out people they don't like. And you know, it's una cosa, bueno, misterio también, pero algunas veces, pero it's something that you have to be involved with. Uh, one of the problems we've had is that uh, there's a federal law called the Voting Rights Act, and under the Voting Rights Act, which is there to protect the rights of minorities, uh, there's a, a section called Section Five. Section Five only applies to three boroughs: the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Manhattan, uh, and that that provides a certain uh, of protections that the other boroughs don't have. Anytime there's any change in the electoral system, they mo move a polling station uh, pl uh, place, they have to go to the, to the Department of Justice to get clearance. Queens doesn't fall under that. But what we've done in the past is that we've told the federal government, treat Queens as if it's under Section 5. Make sure that you know, when you go, when there's any, anything going on in terms of the Voting Rights Act or voting violations, folks from the community can go directly to the Department of Justice to complain. And then groups like the Puerto Rican Legal Defense Fund, Latino Justice, and others have to come in and support you know, your claims. So the whole redistricting thing, which we can't get into a lot of detail, is something that the community has to focus on. It's got something that's going to happen over the next couple of years, and you have to be on top of that.